With this video, I just want to start it off saying thank you guys so much for the support on the last two videos. I cannot believe the World War II video got over 22,000 views as the time I'm recording this audio. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for the support. I think for the last one as well on the Conor McGregor video, I wanted to do something this time a little bit more... Um, a little more traditional in terms of a challenge. And this one was actually suggested from the comments. And I'll put that comment up now. Because... This is something that I want to start doing a lot more of. Start taking the suggestions from the comments and start going through those challenges because I think you guys have really, really good suggestions. And that's what we're going to answer today. Can you beat Fault in Vegas as Boone? We wake up in an unfamiliar place for Boone in Doc Mitchell's office. I take his name as Craig Boone. I didn't even know his first name was Craig. And I try to make him look as close to the character as possible. When picking the stats, I went to the Fallout wiki and I took his actual stats from Endgame. Now his stats don't add up to all the skill points we have available, so I just put one extra in perception and the rest in luck, as I'm not planning to use any of the casinos anyway. I use the three tag skills that he has as well in the game, guns, melee weapons and sneak, and I just pick uh, trigger discipline and four eyes since I'll be using all the glasses, sunglasses for the whole playthrough. I put all my stuff into the footlocker, only keep the broad machete and start my journey off as bid. Now as most traditional runs at this go, I would just kind of get his armor, get his weapons and just try and complete the game with the faction I believe he would be closely associated to. But for this one, I wanted to also complete Boone's main quest, his own personal quest. So I decided that instead of doing just a, this is me being Boone, I wanted to tell a story that's a bit more, imagine Boone was Courier 6 and when he got shot by Benny, he split. The side that stayed in Novak is the side that cannot handle his past and he has to punish himself by staying in Novak. And my part of Boone is the courageous one that wants to go out and undo and fix the rights and fix the wrongs that he did. This doesn't mean though I'm going to be using Boone as a companion for this playthrough. I will use him for certain quests that I think would be very fitting to bring him along for. But for the majority of it, I'm not going to take him as a companion at all. I'm just going to do the quest, the NCR quest, all of his kind of his main story as well, but also all of the things that would do his storyline stuff. Because I'm sure as you guys know, when you do a companion quest, you have to trigger certain things in the game. And instead of just doing enough to get the five points to start the quest, I'm going to be doing every single one possible. So I feel that that would be the run done properly. While I'm rambling on, you can see that I'm trying to beat this Deathclaw to this prospector to steal his loot. And ultimately, the blind Deathclaw does win. Even though this blind Deathclaw has such high perception, I think I mention that in every video. It's just so ridiculous that the blind one has the best perception. But anyway, I get past him, jump on top of Harper's shack, and I feel like I'm safe at this moment. I head into Harper's shack to loot some of the stuff. To my disbelief, the Deathclaw's made it in. As soon as I leave, I'm ended one more time. I, I don't know how a Deathclaw could fit through that door, but the second the game reloads, for some reason he doesn't follow me out. He must have been taking a nap in there. And I decided to head straight off for Novak, because I am no longer wanting to fight any more of that Deathclaw. I'm sure you saw at the start of the video, all the people that I fought didn't have any of the Merc Grunt armor that I needed. But for some reason, when I find all these Viper Gunslingers here, I decide that I have to save it because about four of them all have it. It's almost like when you're playing Pokemon, and you're looking for one specific Pokemon, and then out of nowhere you find five. And that's what happens here. Yeah, it was a really, really weird way that this worked out because I did all of the Prim stuff, got all the way to the Mojave Outpost and didn't find one piece of the, not even the armor because it's not got high DT at all, but you know, part of the outfit and out of nowhere I find all of this. And even then when you get over to Ranger Station and Charlie, they have sunglasses just sitting on top of this caravan, nearly finishing the look. But obviously there's one more person I got to speak to. I got to speak to Boone himself. And right now, even though I feel like I'm pretty close, I mean, the chin. What was I doing with the chin and the nose? I, uh, I completely messed it up. But anyway, I do start his quest. Here I did think, God, is there any way for me to keep Boone's beret? Because I feel that's a very fitting piece of clothing to have for this playthrough. But I don't think there is, so I just have to complete his quest like you normally do. Give him back his beret, and I get the first recon beret. Which is actually, when you look into Boone's inventory that's what he has he has the first recon beret he doesn't have boon's beret at all but um as you can see here, i finally complete the look i am a little bit upset about the broad machete though i don't like that it looks different from boon's machete 
So as soon as I get a new machete, I'm going to have to replace that because it's the aesthetics are annoying me a little bit. The next location I'm off to is Boulder City. Not to do any of the quests or any of the stuff for the Great Cans, but to head right over to this train car. Because here you can find a hunting rifle very easy just lying on the floor. With a bunch of ammo as well. Now I know I could have went to Black Mountain and tried to take one from a Super Mutant, but I don't quite think I'm ready for that fight. But as you can see, this weapon is still not complete. There's still one thing missing. Boons. I'd say it's almost iconic, the scope. Because when I first played this game, I loved Boon. He was my companion for the whole of my first playthrough. And all I ever wanted was to have a scoped hunting rifle. And I, I'm telling you, in the early playthroughs I did when the game first came out, I could never find a hunting rifle scope. I didn't think it was even in the game. I thought there was a weapon exclusive to Boon. But obviously later on I realised that no, a bunch of them do sell it. Um, in my time looking for the scope, I decided to quickly go get the free card bounty stuff from Major Darity, you know, the the bounties that you can do. Run over to the strip and quickly get some XP so I can put my guns up to 40 so I can actually shop at Alexander. The problem with that is, is that Alexander doesn't have a scope either. So, you know, I had to run through all that just for no reason. It's uh, a little bit frustrating, but no matter what, I just have to quickly wait. I think it's only three days you have to wait for all the vendors to redo their stocks. So I do, I wait for three days here. Check back in with Alexander and lo and behold, he does have a hunting rifle scope. And I just have enough caps to buy it. Because as I said, I'm not going to be doing any of the casino stuff today. I add the scope to my gun and as you can see here, it's finally finished. The look is finally done. It's finally all here. Except for the chin and except for the nose, everything in my opinion is as close to Boone as I'll get. I decide to head straight back to Good Springs as I want to complete the Ghost Town gunfight quest for some easy XP. Plus, I feel like Boone would help out the people of Good Springs and Ringo since the Crimson Caravan are kind of part of the end here. And I get to complete this quest with the most accuracy I have ever had. I head straight back to Joe Cobb and finally land the first shot straight in his head. I'm sure if you saw my last couple gameplays, I missed a lot. And I just want you guys to watch this. I. My, my last couple playthroughs have been a lot of unarmed. I used the Bozar, which was interesting in terms of a scoped weapon. But just using this hunting rifle with the scope is so satisfying. It's just so satisfying. So I quickly run back and I grab Boon. Just, you know, just because I love this kind of stuff. I love, I'm really looking forward to the hunting rifle is my favourite weapon. I had to talk to Manny Vargas as this starts his kind of quest line and I tell him to wait for me in Novak. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because as I said at the start of this video, I don't want to have Boone following me around for the whole playthrough. As that will make it a little bit too easy, always having a companion really does make the game quite easy. But if you take the companion and you make him wait somewhere, if you do the storyline stuff and get all the quest line, as you can see, I've got his park, the spotter park. Which I think is very fair. I think if I am being Boone, I should also have that perk. But if I do the stuff like his meeting Volpez and killing him or the stuff at uh, Camp Fall on Hope, as long as he is my companion and I'm telling him to wait, he will still get those storyline triggers, which is good. I quickly get the booted quest from box cards as that's also very important to Boone's storyline. And I start taking out the Caesar Legion with the sniper and again, just that one shot is so satisfying. Using the boxing gloves and the boxing tape and having to beat your opponent into the ground is, is fun, but having a weapon like this is a, it's a real nice change of pace and I feel like it's going to keep these challenges very fresh. As I'm taking out Volpez, I'll take this moment to quickly explain to you guys what the storyline stuff is. So the first one is taking out Volpez. The next one after that is freeing the NCR, no, not the NCR, the Powder Ganger captives from the Legion. The other ones as well, as you can see here, that's triggered. Boone is now talking more, talking more with his, revealing more of his backstory. And um, you got to free the powder gangers. you got to kill Caesar, take on his uh, camp. you got to rescue the people that can't fall in hope when you take over Nelson. Um, and then that should be m pretty much all of his triggers. And that will allow you to do his Bitter Springs questline. Um, if there's something there I've forgotten, I'll mention what comes up in the video as I'm recording this as I'm playing. When I make these videos, I don't really write a script. I just kind of record the gameplay and then I'll watch it back and talk as I watch it. And um, 
yeah, for me, it's it makes it feel a little bit more free line here. But as you can see, I'm untying all these powder gangers. I also got a machete from one of the Legion that looks a lot more like Boon, so that's a bit better. And you can see right here after the quest is completed, if I talk to Boon again, he'll bring up this dialogue. Pisses me off that Legion Slaver just can just operate in NCR territory. Now, he would say that as soon as I finished the quest if he was next to me. But because I got him to wait here, it'll still trigger. But, you know, I can also complete the game without a companion, which I think is better for the challenge. I head straight back over to Camp McCarran and decide to speak to the sniper team. And I also want to do the quest for Corporal Betsy. I won't get too much into it because I don't think it's... It doesn't really need to get spoken about. It's kind of a, a dark quest. But I complete all that because mainly I want this uh, squad to help me during the, the Bounty Hunter quest. Doesn't work out like that though. Because for some reason when I go to take on Driver and the Fi, they're, they're just no, nowhere to be seen. I even I walk him all the way back to where they're supposed to be. But they, they just seem to have... Uh, to kind of bugged out and as Todd Howard said it just works and it just works but luckily the hunting rifle is more than enough to take on these fiends now as I said before when I usually play these games it's usually I, I love just using the hunting rifle and I really felt on my element during this this kind of challenge and something that I thought was quite interesting when driving the fire is running at me I think I'm able to shoot his uh, golf club out of his hands and um, he doesn't have it anymore he even starts picking up a gun to shoot at me which I think is very it's very not driver in the fire and I think well I found it later and it was completely broken so I thought that's that's a pretty nice that's a pretty nice hit to get off there and um, I head straight over to Violet to uh, take her out in one shot as well and head straight over to Cook Cook and instead of taking him out I just had to take his cow out that's a little bit easier and when I get over there Cook Cook's already dead his uh, his fiend friends took him out so he obviously wasn't that strong and with all of them taken out without having to go back and forth and wasting time I hand them all into Major Daugherty and boom, that's the quest line finished straight away. Ah, I forgot this one. Now these are ones that are quite interesting because there's two that you can get at Camp, uh, oh, Camp Fallen Hope, Camp McCarran. Silas here, if you want to do it well and you want to do it pro NCR, you're actually not supposed to kill him. But Boon gets one point, a plus point for his storyline if you're able to kill Silas in here. Now what that does is actually doesn't allow you to get the response or the NCR um, fame, which is really annoying. But yeah, uh, I get all the stuff from Cyrus, he gives the information off, and I just, he, he doesn't fight back once he's, he goes into the into the passive stance, so I just keep wailing on him. Now I know obviously these aren't Boone's weapons, the sniper or the machete, but yeah. there's nothing else to do at this point, and since it's a, it's a must for the storyline, I feel like it's okay. To, to allow myself to beat him to death. But w another important part for his storyline is to head over to Ronald Curtis and to get the quest line to find the spy. Luckily, Lieutenant Boyd is willing to talk to me again. She wouldn't talk to me before after I killed Silas. And what you do for this quest line is you have to, first of all, find the spy correctly and defuse the bomb, which is not too hard. That's, that's pretty easy, I would say, in terms of this quest. And that's what most people would do. I listened long enough to complete the quest and I head straight up to confront Curtis. Now, the thing is, if you talk too much to him and go through too many lines of dialogue, you actually don't have enough time to defuse the bomb. So the best thing to do is to just shoot him straight away. You know, he's absolutely dead to rights. He's banged to rights. There's, he ain't going to bust case on this one. You just got to take him out as quick as possible. And that gives me plenty of times to deactivate the bomb. And I find it is quite, I feel like I may have done something wrong because Colonel Hugh doesn't quite believe that it's true. But I think there's a better way to do it. But anyway, that's just how I decided to do it. And as you can see here with another three points added to him, Boone is opening up even more. He's telling me more about the Bitter Springs Massacre. Let's not forget, we literally haven't even walked together yet. I have walked him out to this part of Novak and that is all I have done. But anyway, time to head off to Camp Forlorn Hope, which is the second last uh, storyline point to get from. I head straight over to Major Priority and to Rage Milo to, you know, first of all, introduce myself as old Craig Boone, and of course he's heard of me. But something that happens strange as I'm halfway through these quests, I've noticed that Boone had moved. He had moved to the Nevada Wind Farm where you find the Cazadors. And what was really strange here is that I think Boone is trying to enforce his storyline. Like, I've already got the quest for Camp Fallen Hope, but he is following me now to give me his quest because it's ready to activate. I wanted to finish all his storyline stuff first, but 
he wants to go to Better Springs straight away. So that's what I do. I grab Boone, take him straight over to Better Springs. And this is going to be one of the few quests that I do take Boone with me because it only feels necessary to have both Boons, both Craig Boone and Boone complete this quest. Now, we fall asleep. We wait on, uh, what is it, Coyote Tail Ridge? Some weird name like that. And that's where you get to start his quest, where you take out the Legion Assault on the camp. And nothing too difficult here, just another, you know, a bunch of our legionaries, no centurions anyway. And uh, I get this really nice sequence of taking out mongrel after mongrel and then soldier after soldier. I get really, God, just such a satisfying weapon. I saved this poor refugee from getting his uh, butt bit by these mongrels. And uh, that's it, the quest finished. Boone is crouching down and letting me know that um, we have completed it. And I luckily got the survival ending, his survival armor, which means he is... That's kind of the most positive one. It makes him... It ends with him having more reason to live, which I think is uh, the best ending for Boone because if you have his assault gear, then that means Boone is, again, willing to die for, for his past mistakes. But again, I grab Boone in his new armor and make him wait again and go finish what I was doing at Camp Fall on Hope. Now, I decided to wait here. I was trying to wait till nighttime to try and catch the thief for the, the medical supplies. And something strange really happened. A Legion assault team just spawned in the middle of Camp Fall on Hope. Which I thought was... I don't know if it's impossible. I know that they spawn a lot around Red Rock Canyon and anywhere where the kind of Legion are. But to spawn in the middle of a an NCR camp, that was... That one took me a bit off guard and luckily it was here because, again, I don't have too much damage resistance. So the fact that they were in here was good because a lot of NCR guys came and fought. Anyway, back to the main story then with uh, you know, Fall on Hope. I catch the guy stealing the supplies. I get the, the supplies back for them. I help the comp officers and I'm, I'm not going to waste your guys' time. I had to run all across the goddamn Mojave for this. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, I, I go and speak to all five of them quickly give them the new codes and that should set me on to the final part of the the camp full on hope quest where they want me to help the doctor again and it's to do more of his help his patients now this is lucky because everything you need to help these patients is in that office you don't need any sort of medical stuff you can do it all there and that's enough luckily i don't have to go back to those ranger stations to start the assault on nelson to make sure I get all the points, I have to make sure none of the soldiers that are being crucified die. I can't take them out with any mercy killings or anything like that. So I have to get in there, take out all the legions from a distance, get in to finish off the last couple few, and untie all the men. The only part that's left is to take on Dead Sea. Now this, for me, is a toughest battle as I've ever had. I mean, comparable to the leg at Dead Sea. Because, oh, he is, he is already dead. And at this point, I thought... What, what a better weapon to take than the Liberator, you know? I know Boone has a machete, but having a machete that he claimed from a, a Legion uh, well, commander, I think that's very fitting. And as you can see here, Boone is still telling me about the mercy killings that can't fall on hope, which again shows that even though he's not following me, he is getting all these storyline points. I mean, we're nearly 20 minutes into this video and we're only just getting onto the main story. So, no no time to waste. Let's just speed run through all the stuff we know. I head over to the boomers and I do their quest. I listen to our beautiful little Pete and I do... God. Oh, I really did mess up his face, didn't I? He looks more like Corporal Betsy than anything. I speak to Pete, do all his uh, optional questions to get more inf infamy, to get more fame with the boomers. Give all my scrap metal to Jack, head over to Raquel, kill the ants, give her a bunch of missiles, and there we go. I can now free the bomber as quick as that. There's no time to waste on the boomers. Again, we've already done the King's Quest before, so we'll speed through this again. Head straight over to the King. Just snipe Oris there. No matter how you complete this quest, you go through with everything, you kill him right at the start. The King has the same reaction. I head over to Roy, head over to Julie. I had to go to the missionary because they do not believe that Craig Boom, famous NCR ranger, is not part of the NCR. But I get the conversation with Elizabeth. The king figures out that there's been a war. I speak to Elizabeth again and everything for Ambassador Crocker is done. And I gotta, you know, do all that. Head straight back to the king. Use my favour to stop the battle between the NCR in this area. And then head back to Crocker. 
Now with that, I had to walk from the strip all the way to the NCR embassy one more time than I had to. I'm trying to save on backtracking and I end up having to do even more. So with the Colonel Moore missions, I decide that I'm not going to come back here until I complete everything. So where's the next first place to go? Might as well head straight to the strip. And I know you can complete the Omerta quest properly, find out what they're doing, but the quicker and much more funner way is just to head straight into the casino and just start blasting. The Omertas are nice because you only have to kill Big Sal, you don't have to kill anyone else. I don't think you can even find Kachino or Nero during this part. And once he's dead, I head straight back to Camp Golf, get that lucky 38 card, decide to sell the rest of my snow globes to Jane, and you know, there's no better way than killing Mr. House, where right before I might as well get paid, head in and I, I decide to get him out of his chamber. Now, when I do it, I decide to shoot as soon as he's in shot, you know, as a sniper would, and I decide I'm going to leave all the stuff that I have extra that Boone would wear, just so people know exactly who did what this is. And the only thing I was missing was an extra pair of sunglasses. No time to waste, I head straight to the Brotherhood Bunker, take out McNamara, take out Harden, take out Scribe Tiger, and decide to bury them. Not much more to sell, there's nothing else you can really do for them, and I don't think Boone would take the time to get them on the NCR side. And I don't want to waste that time either. With the Great Cans, I actually really wanted to think about what Boone would do. Because obviously Boone has a really troubled past with the cans because of Bitter Springs. Obviously I think he would make sure Carl had no allegiances to the cans. I'll get rid of him straight away. But I thought, what would he do? Would he wipe out the cans? Or would he try and work with the cans to get them on side? And I felt like the best way, in the most kind of Boone way, would be to assassinate the Great Can leader and then put Regis in charge. I hand in all my quests very fast and I get the sent off to protect the president. Now this is one of the first times that I feel very, you know, well equipped for this mission. I'm in a sniper's nest with a sniper. I take out the other Legion sniper and I report back that this sniper is sniping. And you get to watch President Kimber run away here. Now something happens that's very interesting. You can see that the Legion assassin, even though the Vortibird is gone, is still trying to get President Kimball. He runs up to the roof and instantly gets blown up. I don't know by who, but he gets blown up instantly. Now, I can head to the dam, but I feel that like there's one more thing, and I'm sure you guys have been asking about the one last thing I mentioned at the start of this video. I got to kill Kaiser with Boon. I go back, speak to Boon, but before I can go, I gotta get the mark of Caesar, because you can't get the Cotton Wukul without the mark. So I head in, Take out Benny, I mean he did shoot me in the head, this half of Boone he did shoot in the head, so that's somewhat poetic revenge, I feel like Boone would do that. And I get the Platinum Chip, get the Mario Keezer and head straight to Cottonwood Cove. Now even though I feel like I could do this by myself, I, I can't help but feel like I must take Boone with me. Because first of all he gives a lot of dialogue during the this mission, and I feel like it's... The, the story that, I'm trying to, that I was trying to tell at the start, I mean I feel like the story I was telling throughout this gameplay was changing a lot. But the idea of two boons that split apart now coming together to kill the person that's caused them so much pain is, is poetic justice, you know? It's like Shakespeare on a motor scooter. It's poetry in motion. We take out the boat rider, old Curler Cruiser Lucullus, and he, Boon is, Boon is hyping me up for this fight. We head straight over to the fort and we just start blasting. Pow, pow, pow. Although the hunting rifle's not too good up front, and I should probably be using the machete. I felt like I just, I never used the machete much in this gameplay at all. I just had too much fun with the hunting rifle, especially if you use it in vats. I walk straight over here and I start sniping the Caesar's Legion from the weather station. Now at this point I wiped out most of the other people in this camp except for Caesar's tent, but no matter what, this guy's getting his reps in. He is not gonna miss his chest workout for anything. Head straight into Caesar's tent, Take one big shot straight at his head, and I miss. Get a couple shots in, and when they all start running, I start running too. Get right out of that tent. I use this exploit over here in the rechargeable rifle one. For some reason, they cannot get past this bit of metal. And Caesar seems to have wisen up to the strategy and decide to get his own weapon other than his power fist. I get to Caesar's tent and get the final piece of dialogue from Boom. This is the only last storyline piece that I can get finally finishing all of his personal quests. I take Boone straight to the dam, and when I get in there, I tell him to wait. Because, as I said, taking out Caesar is appropriate, but the fight with the Legate, I feel that, that needs to be a one-on-one. -on -one. 
Now, I'm sure some of you are asking me about some of the other NCR quests that I didn't do. Or more importantly, the Novak quest that I didn't do. Because I think the comment for this challenge mentioned getting idolised in Novak. And I want to take this moment to say, when you speak to Boone and you understand his feelings about the people in Novak, like Manny Vargas, I mean Jenny May, the people of Novak haven't been good to him. I mean, someone there sold his wife into slavery. Everyone there hated him and his wife. And then, um, when I first thought of the challenge, I thought, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be doing that. That'll be part of the, the challenge itself. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, no, I don't think I don't think he would become hated by them. But I don't think he would complete their quest. I think he would just leave it behind him. Anyway, less of my rambling, I'm now here to fight the Legate. And you can see here, I get huge critical shots right on the Legate straight away. But as soon as I feel like I'm doing well, I'm telling you, that must have been a 1-2 from both Praetorians because that took me out unbelievably quick. For this time, I decided to take up the Mongols before I start the fight because last time they, they did swarm me. And you know here, you can actually snipe the Praetorian guards before the fight starts. I mean, if you do shoot one of them, it will turn the Legate hostile and he will start running down the hill at you. But you can take out both the Praetorians before he gets to you. Although this is one of the easier fights with Legate because I've got a strong weapon, I found that the, the most painful part was his Praetorians, mainly because they just kept crippling me and m messing with my vision with their power fists. So every time they hit you, it kind of makes the screen flash up. I try as quick as possible to get the Legate into his second phase of the fight where he starts retreating, because at that point you can take a moment to fight his Praetorians and really start focusing on them, and I get that right here. At this point, I decide to run the veterans up here take them out and start fighting the Legate right to the end. I don't have any more vats unfortunately, but the Legate's pretty low on health and I get a really lucky critical strike taking out a huge chunk of his health. The only thing that's left is to take out the last of the Legionary. I mean, you don't have to. I could just walk straight over to the gate and let it blow up itself, but I don't know, I feel like it's part of the battle itself to fight all the Legionary in the camp. And again, with the hunting rifle, it's not too difficult to take them out. I walk up to the gate get blinded by the explosion. I speak to the general and get a very poorly timed level up. I mean, I think everyone gets this level up. I mean, it's such a waste of time and prove that yes, you can indeed beat Fall New Vegas while being Craig Boon. I want to just start off by saying that I want to start making a schedule for these videos. Um, I know I've been doing usually one a week, sometimes two a week, but I want to start making this quite consistent. So I'm going to try and release these every Friday, every Friday night, Saturday morning, um, if, I, if I'm able to do that, maybe late Saturday, Sunday. But the goal is every Friday to release one of these videos, so you can expect at least one a week for now if life doesn't get too crazy. This challenge was a very nice change of pace. I mean, it's one of the longer videos on this channel because I had to complete a lot more quests. But it gave a lot more, I don't want to say the word variety because that's not true, it was a very limited run in terms of the weapon. But for the challenges that I've done so far, this one is nice. Sniper, sitting down, a powerful weapon. Again, no armor, but you know, you can replace that with stim packs. And yeah, I, I had a lot of fun playing this one, I really did. I really do look forward to more of your comments down below. I'm taking a note of any challenges that I think sound really good and trying to get through them. And again, I want to just reiterate one more time. I. I am so grateful for all the support you guys have given me and I just want to thank you guys so much because when I made this channel originally, I again, I actually only kind of did it as, you know, a bit of a hobby, something to do with my with my kind of free time and the support and the, the love that I've been getting in the comments has really motivated me to make more and more of these comments. So if you guys have got this far in the video, please leave a comment. Leave a comment saying... Leave a comment saying Goku. Say Goku, write Goku in the comments now. And that means I know you got to this point. And that will let me know how many people are getting this far in the video. But yeah, other than that guys, thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time.